Nebraska. Wild, untamed, untapped canvas. Born of the Great Plains, rolling sand hills, and rugged foothills of the Rockies. Grandly interwoven with the fabric of running water and swelling with the bounty of the nation's largest aquifer. As a territory, it was crisscrossed by Easterners headed westerly and was the proud home for regional and indigenous tribes. It was the Oto that would prescribe the name Nebraska, meaning flat water, in both reference and reverence to the Platte River. For it flowed through their lives, providing sustenance that was a lifeblood methodically pumping through the veins of a territory destined to become the 37th state. As the railroad became the mechanized messenger and deliverer of a growing nation, travelers aboard these iron horses would rumble across the plains and behold natural beauty and soon awaken to abundant natural resources. By its very namesake, Nebraska was to become a cistern overflowing with nature's ability to produce and replenish its resources. During the 1870s, and along toward the turn of the century, land agents representing the railroads knew that stores of water lay below the ground in central Nebraska. To attract settlers, they marketed the sale of adjacent railroaded land by offering hookups to the underground aquifer. As a result, windmills dotted the landscape to provide water for cooking, drinking, washing, and watering livestock. But just as homesteading began in earnest, the market crash in 1929 began bankrupting the American dream. And when most thought it could not become any more dire, the decibel years of the early 1930s emaciated farmland and nearly swept away agriculture production across the Great Plains. In response, the federal government assisted farmers by passing the Soil Conservation Act in 1935, and the U.S. Soil Conservation Service was established that same year. While the nation sought recovery, the economy was being retooled by the advent of World War II, and as veterans came home from the war, they came back to the farm. Just as the gold rush lured the wide-eyed dreamers to California at the middle of the 19th century, Nebraska's liquid gold would draw the battle-weary generation as it quenched the dry earth and grew it green. In Nebraska, soil and water conservation districts were being formed across the state, county by county, during the 1940s and 50s. Subsequently, Nebraska's waterways were becoming engorged by heavy rains. Yet with irony, as the rains were looked upon as a blessing, the reality of flooding would unfortunately become the norm between the 1940s and 1960s. Issues of flood control and soil erosion plagued agricultural and industrial development. And as new technology and well drilling became readily available, the aquifer became more accessible, resulting in a sizable increase of wells drilled and groundwater being pumped at a remarkable rate during the 1960s and 1970s. With unmitigated flooding and soil erosion, coupled with increasingly unregulated irrigation runoff and groundwater depletion, a new direction was needed. Because of its value to farmers and urban centers, groundwater became Nebraska's most precious natural resource. But what were to happen if demand for groundwater outpaced the supply? In April 1969, four Nebraska state senators introduced Legislative Bill 1357 in order to consolidate 154 special purpose districts, including the soil and water conservation districts created in the 1940s and 50s, into a series of natural resources districts based on watershed boundaries. The founding father of LB 1357 was Senator Morris Kramer of Aurora, Nebraska. It was an uphill battle, however. Not surprisingly, the natural resources district concept proved controversial. The idea of dividing governmental units along natural boundaries, such as watershed lines, was embraced by some and scorned by others. Some officials of existing districts were concerned of losing local control and were apprehensive of the taxing and regulatory authority given to the proposed natural resources districts, simply referred to as NRDs. Still others welcomed the chance to carry out large-scale projects that were not bound by county lines or other artificial political boundaries. After two years of intense debate and a last-minute injunction trying to block the formation of NRDs, Legislative Bill 1357 finally passed on September 18, 1969 and directed the Special Purpose Districts to merge into 24 Natural Resources Districts by July 1, 1972. 
During the period that LB 1357 passed, in the spring of 1972, the newly formed Natural Resources Districts began hiring staff members and gathering board members through the general election process. Buildings for district headquarters and equipment storage were acquired and ready for the NRD's official unveiling on July 1, 1972. Nebraska's Natural Resources Districts were open for business. So what does an NRD really do? How does an NRD work? The High Plains Aquifer supplies Nebraska with more groundwater than any other state. Above ground, the state is landscaped with 24,000 miles of rivers and streams. Nebraska's major river basins include the Missouri, Platte, Niobrara, Loop, Republican, Elkhorn, Nemaha, and Blue. Though it is plentiful and usable, Nebraska's water is neither infinite nor immune from serious drought and pollution. Irrigators, cities and villages, industries and wildlife all compete for the resource. Contamination may come from sediment, farm chemicals, urban runoff, and industrial sources. Nebraska's natural resources districts are helping to secure our future through local leadership responsibilities to protect groundwater from overuse and pollution. Each district has a groundwater management plan to protect groundwater. State law has given districts a variety of regulatory tools to deal with contamination, shortages, or other user conflicts. NRDs encourage water stewardship by providing financial assistance to landowners for irrigation water management, well decommissioning, and best management practices to protect water. NRDs are not just water guardians. In some cases, they are suppliers. A number of NRDs operate water systems for rural customers and small communities. Natural Resources Districts work to offset destructive natural forces by promoting conservation, educating the public, and working with other agencies such as the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service and the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources to install conservation measures pertaining to land management. Cost share initiatives such as the Nebraska Soil and Water Conservation Program and programs specific to each district give landowners financial assistance. Erosion is controlled by installing terraces, grassed waterways, grade stabilization structures, buffer strips, dams, planting of windbreaks, and improving range management. When soil erosion becomes a threat to neighboring properties, districts have the legal authority to mitigate a solution under Nebraska's Erosion and Sediment Control Act. Nebraska was a national leader in planting trees during the Dust Bowl era of the 1930s. Carrying on that tradition, the Energy Conservation Tree Program helps landowners plant more than a million trees each year in Nebraska. Trees benefit both people and animals. They shade and shelter homes, reduce soil erosion, protect crops and livestock, provide homes for wildlife, control noise, provide us with food and lumber, and add beauty to our landscape. Each year, districts sell trees for conservation use. Districts assist landowners with designing, planning, and installing weed barrier to help in controlling weeds which compete for water. Many districts will share the cost with the landowner as funds are available. The Wild Nebraska and other wildlife programs pay landowners to set aside land for wildlife. Wild Nebraska is a partnership between the NRDs and the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission to help establish habitat for Nebraska's wildlife population. As long as rain falls and snow melts, floods will occur. Nebraska's natural resources districts are committed to working with landowners and other agencies to minimize the damages that floods cause. Throughout Nebraska, entities employ a watershed protection approach. Utilizing floodplain management measures, the NRDs help protect people and property from flood damage by designing and building dams, levees, dikes, drainage ditches, and other structures to keep floodwaters from taking lives or damaging crops, buildings, and roads. Districts also aid communities in planning flood control and mitigation projects, bringing many interested agencies together toward a common goal.
From the sand hills and the Lus Hills to the Pine Ridge and the hardwood savannas, Nebraska's grazing lands blanket over half of the state. With proper management, grazing lands can recharge the state's aquifers, help promote water quality, and prevent soil erosion. Entities encourage stewardship by providing financial assistance for planned grazing systems, including constructing cross-fencing and pipelines for livestock water. Cooperating with the USDA, Natural Resources Conservation Service, and the Nebraska Department of Natural Resources, Entities sponsor grazing land field tours and other educational programs to promote sustainable conservation practices. Conservation is just as important in cities as it is in rural areas. The activities of city residents have a major impact on water and soil. The conservation of farmland to urban uses can greatly increase potential flooding and water pollution problems such as soil sedimentation and pollution from urban runoff. Entities respond to these needs by focusing resources and programs toward urban concerns and issues. They include urban forestry, urban park development and improvement, wellhead protection, flood control, stream bank stabilization, recreation and environmental education. No matter where you live in Nebraska, from the biggest city to the most remote Sand Hills Ranch, you are never far from a public outdoor recreation area. Many of these recreational opportunities, trails, lakes, parks, and wildlife areas, are built and maintained by Nebraska's natural resources districts. Many NRD projects are developed for multiple purposes. Recreational trails are built atop of flood control levees or along abandoned railroad lines. Dams built for flood control purposes often develop into recreational areas. Habitat areas and wetlands are sometimes available to hunters and are often preserved for interpretive nature study. Educating our youth about natural resources and reasons to conserve them may be as important an activity as any carried out by Nebraska's natural resources districts. Nebraska's entities are nationally known for their innovative and effective environmental education programs. Each year, thousands of elementary and middle school age students are given hands-on outdoor education experiences through their local NRDs. Water festivals and other resources management field days have proven to be valuable teaching tools. At the secondary education level, the Envirothon is a challenging opportunity for high school age students to demonstrate their knowledge of soils, aquatics, wildlife, and other natural resources management topics. Regional and state of Nebraska competitions are sponsored by Nebraska's NRDs and other resources management partners. Students also benefit from outdoor classroom developments and contests for land, range, and soil judging. Many districts help teachers develop the tools to pass the conservation message on to the next generation. Districts assist universities and colleges in developing natural resources education efforts. Whether in the classroom or on a field trip, the principles of environmental stewardship and conservation are being passed on to our state's future decision makers. Newsletters, program and project brochures, speakers, internet websites, public meetings with landowners and other activities help spread the natural resources management message of protecting lives, protecting property, and protecting the future. You know, it seems to me that the Upper Big Blue Natural Resources District sees it the same way I do, that protecting the things I feel are important to me are also important to them. Like building flood control structures to protect lives and property, planting trees for wildlife habitat, and they create recreational areas that folks can enjoy. And, well, loyalty and trust go a long way because I feel safe knowing that the Upper Big Blue NRD looks after the quality of our groundwater, the very water that we drink and use to make a living. And the NRD monitors the quantity of groundwater to make sure that plenty of water will be available now and for the future. Yep, the future is pretty important to me because that future is walking right alongside of me. 
you and the Upper Big Blue NRD, protecting lives, protecting property, and protecting the future.